dream of exploring Egypt's ancient wonders and bustling streets of Cairo? Buckle up travellers and join me as I recap my epic 14-day Egyptian adventure. We'll uncover amazing places, navigate unexpected challenges, lari, lari. and share everything you need to know before planning your own Egyptian escapade. So are you ready? Let's explore Egypt together. Assalamualaikum guys, welcome back to Halaluji. This is my last video here in Egypt. Throughout these two weeks of journey, we have gone to Cairo, to Aswan, to Abu Simbel, to Luxor, and then we go around places to travel in Cairo, and then we come back in Mansura, our last pit stop. We tried to go to Alex, but when we want to buy our ticket, the train ticket has been sold out, so we couldn't go there. Let's take a look at the Egyptian town and then we'll see whichever place that we have been into. For one Egyptian pound, can you guys see this? So this is in Abu Simbel in Aswan. So I'll show you how does Abu Simbel look like in real place. There are two temples here which is cut from the rock and at my back there is actually the main temple which has the carving of the Pharaoh Ramses II. At the back of one Egyptian pound is actually Masjid Sultan Koni Bay, which is located at Cairo, but we didn't have time to visit here. So for Homsa Gene, this one is Masjid Ibn Tulun. We went here also in Cairo. So this is the largest and the oldest mosque here in Egypt. And it is also the oldest mosque in the whole Africa. <laughs> I'm not too sure uh, which temple is it. And for ten pound, it is Masjid Al Rifai, which is in the old Cairo. So we've also visited this Masjid Al Rifai together with Mos Madrasa Sultan Al Hassan. And then this is Khofra. So in Giza Pyramid, the spring head and the pyramid name is also named after Khofra. Okay. For 20 pounds, this is Masjid Muhammad Ali Pasha which is located at the citadel of Salahuddin Al Ayyubi. <laughs> here I'm not too sure which temple is it so for 50 gane I thought this one is at Luxor but apparently this one is actually at temple of Edfu we didn't go here in our trip this time and for the masjid here I'm not too sure which masjid it is and for 100 100 pound this is masjid Sultan Hassan we've been here it is next to the masjid Arifai There are four Islamic schools here inside this madrasa. All of the four scholars of Islamic, Imam Maliki, Imam Hanbali, Imam Hanafi, and Imam Shafi'i, has their own madrasa or school. Inside this mosque, as you can see, there's four doors over there. 
and here is the Sphinx located at the Giza so we've been here also here in 200 Egyptian pound this is the masjid or the mosque at the Kony Bay at Alexandria but we didn't manage to go there this is the scribe I'm not too sure the statue of the scribe here referring to who so that's all for Egyptian pound all of them we have visited almost like maybe 80% of them during our trip so if you guys would like to go to interesting places in Egypt go and collect all of this first so you guys can go and check out all of these interesting places to showcase in the Egyptian pound it's been a fun travel here in Egypt. The food is amazing. Every day we went outside until I gained weight. I don't know how much did I gain, but I can show you the food is fantastic. This is koshari, the traditional Egyptian food combination of chickpeas, pasta, fried onion, and you can choose either you want a beef or you want a liver. Let me try this strawberry jam. It is so freshly made. Sudah we love. Oh, bit slice. Oh, sedapnya. This one is mulokia. It's a little bit slimy. Mm. This is super delicious. Come on, sedap, sedap. I'm gonna try the sugar cane. The taste is slightly different than Malaysian sugar cane. Tastes more grassy. This is Almaroi, Mauzon, Halib, Treats, Chocolate Milk. <laughs> Double upon this bread shop, so I'm lucky because tomorrow we have to go out very early in the morning, so I have to take away some bread. I'm eating this. Got ourselves roasted chicken for tonight and tomorrow lunch. This one is Hawaii, it's a meat pie. This is falafel. This is falafel sandwich. This is the Sahra mm. It's very different. It's like a warm milk pudding. And I can feel coconut snakes inside. That's the chicken bechamel, the baked pasta. And that's the vera chocolate. Okay, now let's eat. This is just a tip of the iceberg guys. We have tried so much amazing Egyptian food on this trip and there wasn't enough room to show it all here. If you're curious about the delicious bite we've savoured, mm. head over to our Full Egypt travelog series for a deeper dive into Egyptian cuisine. Because the currency exchange rate to Malaysia is very low, one ringgit Malaysia you can get around 3.6, 3.7 Egyptian pounds, so it is very suitable for us. MashaAllah, berapa? Empat, tiga, lima. This is the orange. They freshly squeeze these three pieces for just five gane equivalent to Malaysian one ringgit. USD maybe around 30 cents. Since it is winter here in Egypt and the strawberries are in season, so we should definitely not miss to buy the strawberries when we are here. The price is super cheap, it's only 10 gane, which is equivalent to two ringgit Malaysia or around 50 cents USD per kilo, guys. We still have the remaining strawberries from last night. It's so big, guys. So big. The low prices definitely made shopping more tempting. We couldn't resist getting lost in the lively souks and markets, hunting for awesome bargains and unique Egyptian souvenirs to take home. 
just now I did my shopping at Abu Auf, which is a premium brand for nuts, tea, and drinks. Was something we call the in Arabic hamal. Strong taste of spice. All of this. Wow, Rizzo, you need to eat it too. And how can we say no to these dangerously delicious chocolate bars at a crazy good price? Guys, I need your help on a mission. We had 2,000 awesome people checking out our video last month, but only 3% become part of Halology Fam by subscribing. This Egypt travelog series took a whole year to put together with 27 videos packed with all the travel goodness you could dream of. I'm passionate about sharing these experiences and your support really means the world to me. I still have a long way to go to reach 1,000 subscribers and every single one of you counts. So if you enjoy the content and want to see more adventure in the future, smash that subscribe button and join the crew. So have you done it yet? Now let's resume our video. When you're traveling during COVID, you have to do PCR tests before you go and when you come back, you have to do another PCR test and then you have to do HSO. For this trip, we underwent 4 COVID tests including 3 PCR and 1 RTK-AG. I think that is the new norms that we have to go through regardless of anywhere that you want. But Alhamdulillah, when you're traveling here in Egypt, you do not need to quarantine yourself when you come here. But just be cautious and continue to follow the SOP set when we were in Malaysia. So the people over here, they didn't really wear masks. So if you are in a place where it is less crowded, it's okay if you don't wear your mask. But if you're at a market or somewhere crowded, so do wear your mask. All right, as we wrap up our Egypt adventure, let's rewind for a bit. We kick things off in the bustling city of Cairo and then flew down to Aswan. We cruise along the majestic Nile, soaking in the stunning scenery as we glided past ancient temples and vibrant villages. One of these amazing temples was Pile, where its intricate carving transported us back to a bygone era. We also took a break to chill in the colourful Nubian village experiencing the warm hospitality and the unique local culture. They gave us permission to hold this photograph. The temperature is very cold. And of course, no Nile River experience is complete without witnessing the magical sunsets painting the sky with vibrant hues. In Luxor, we embark on a journey through time. Ancient tombs, Magnificent temples and towering statues like the Colossi of Mamnoon awaited us. Deep within the Valley of the Kings, we descended into the Pharaoh's tomb. We are going down to see the tomb. Let me show you, this is the ceiling of the tomb. Here, story edge on the walls depicting their journey through the afterlife, echoing through the centuries. Towering beneath the cliff of Daira Bahri, Hatshepsut Temple is a magnificent testament to a powerful female pharaoh. Right in the heart of Luxor stands Luxor Temple connected to the awe-inspiring Karnak Temple by a 2.7km avenue lined with springs. We do have roughly 134 billions and they are all set in over as a high 25 meters. These incredible structures offer a glimpse into the immense scale and grandeur of ancient Egyptian civilization. After all those pharaoh's temples and tombs, seeing their mummies in Cairo feels surreal. It reminds me to the story in Al-Quran about the tyrant pharaoh and his soldiers who chased after Prophet Musa and the children of Israel who got drowned in the sea. 
Allah said that He will preserve His body to serve as a lesson for everyone. And here in the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization lies the mummy simply submitting to the will of Allah being displayed in the museum for the whole world to see. All of the mummy collection is downstairs. All the Ramses, Seti, Amenhotep, even the Queen, Nefertari. In Cairo, we've also explored the impressive citadel of Salahuddin al Ayyubi and countless beautiful mosques, witnessing the power of Islamic architecture. This is An Nasir Muhammad Mosque. It was built 200 years after the rules of Sultan Salahuddin Muhammad Ayyubi. The dome is made to symbolize the dome at Masjid Nabawi, which is green in color. And the ark over there is also made with the inspiration from Masjid Nabawi in Madinah. And of course, no Egypt trip is complete without checking out the iconic Giza pyramids. We save them for the last, right before heading to Mansura for my sister's graduation. Dr. Norhadi Rahmi Tihamdan. In this trip, we've rode every imaginable mode of transport: plane, coach, vans, boats, cab, Uber or Didi. Okay, shukran. Tough, tough and even train. For scary right? And best of all, we hop into a hot air balloon ride to witness the ancient grand doors and Nile from above. We are at 600 meter above the ground level. This breathtaking experience is one I'll never forget and I highly recommend adding it into your Egyptian itinerary. Let's be honest, this journey wasn't always more sailing. Crossing busy roads was quite daunting at first. Dealing with quirky elevators in a round down building was quite scary. <laughs> Language barriers push us out of our comfort zone. Having to bargain almost every time and the occasional scam attempt kept us on toes. I was followed by a kid. She kept dragging me by my arm until like several shops. I was trying to chase her because she wants to take my camera. The roads outside the city can be pretty rough. The driver took a countryside road and it was a little bit bumpy. I think the journey took around 5 hours. It was a bit longer than I expected because I was told that it should only take 4 hours. We are still on our way to Cairo. Our train ride also got a bit bumpy when it stopped unexpectedly for 2 hours in the middle of nowhere. So in the end, it took us 14 hours to get from Luxor to Cairo. But hey, that's a part of the adventure. This vlog project was no walk in the park. Most of the time at the ancient sites so or in the museum, filming using camera is banned or we have to pay extra money to record using camera. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I tried to turn on my action camera and the guard here told me that action camera is not enough. Only phone is allowed. We have finished touring inside the museum. We cannot bring camera downstairs. At Karnak Temple, we got a little bit into trouble. My sister thought it would be cool to take some graduation photos and apparently wearing graduation robe or some kind of uniform is not allowed inside the museum or ancient monuments. And the security guard stopped us when I was taking the photo and we even had to chat with the museum director to clear up the situation. It's always a learning process when you travel to new places so make sure you guys do your own research on the rules and regulation when you are traveling and my mic got confiscated when I was at the citadel of Salahuddin al Ayyubi. So make sure if you guys come here do prepare your phone because my microphone got confiscated and I was told not to use my camera so I only have my phone here. Hey, tak record. Penat je 
It has been a while, right? I started off editing this video back in 2023 and it took me over a year to complete all the 27 vlogs of our 14 days adventure in Egypt. Whoa, whoa, whoa! They say behind every successful man there stands a woman but for me, behind every beautiful shot there stands a camera waiting to fall off the sky or oh, even from the put. Well, lucky for me, my cameras are safe from harm but I just broke my phone. I just only use it for one week and the screen is broken. Oh my god. <sighs> I thought we were done, but there's more up there. Juggling life, work and broken ankle is definitely not easy, but this trip has enriched us beyond measure. We get to learn about ancient history, witness grand monuments and learn about different culture. And it also made us appreciate our life back home and that's a priceless souvenir. Today, we'll be going back from Masura back to Cairo and then we'll take off flight. Qatar Airways and then we will transit at Doha oh, and then back to Malaysia so now everyone is ready so we have to go to the airport right now from Masura so hopefully we'll land safely back in Malaysia as we bid farewell to Egypt let's have one last look at this beautiful green landscape images little vegetable farms and even some orchards After a smooth two and a half hour drive from Mansura, we are finally nearing Cairo International Airport. Because we already did our wet check-in last night, so we are just queuing at the wet check-in counter. The queue is shorter compared to those who haven't checked in. That's the queue that you have to undergo if you haven't checked in yet. After all our adventures, it was time to head home. Our next stop is Doha and we took off from Cairo on Qatar Airways. So we have land with couscous. I don't know what is that. We have safely boarded our connecting flight from Doha to Kuala Lumpur. Sorry, I didn't record the whole process just now because one, it is not a lot and second, it is a little bit hectic. So just now for wheelchair, they really do provide assistance. Once you disembark the plane, they will wait at the gate and then they will provide the wheelchair assistant and buggy to your next connecting gate. They assist up until to the plane because here in Doha we have to board the train with shuttle bus and then we board a separate carriage to go into the plane because for other people they have to climb the stairs so for my mom she couldn't climb the stairs so they let us in in a special carriage and then inside the plane they have a very small wheelchair and they pull my mom from front until our seat so it is very convenient here for those who are disabled and traveling with wheelchair so you do not need to worry about traveling with Bata Airways. Wow, check out this view guys. As we flew into Malaysian airspace, I was blown away by how beautiful it was. It looked like a giant colorful rug laid out beneath us with fluffy white clouds giving away to lush green landscapes and curly river. And Alhamdulillah, after a smooth 8 hour flight, we have finally touched down in Malaysia. 
Okay guys, so here's the thing. Actually, I have record the whole travel journey from Cairo to Kuala Lumpur in this cool Insta go-to camera, the one that the kid was trying to steal from me the previous night. But unfortunately, I lost all of the footage upon our arrival in Malaysia back in February 2022. It was still pandemic time and we have to go through another round of PCR tests upon our arrival at the airport and then we have to go into home quarantine for a while and after that we have to go to another RTK AG test at the local clinic before we are released from quarantine and then lockdown continues for several months in Malaysia until we are all free again so in between the post travel chaos and the staycation vibe due to the pandemic I totally forgot to transfer the footage even worse I've reformatted the camera and here I am two years later editing this video and realizing that all the footage of the last day is gone <sighs> That was a total travel failure guys. Anyway, if you guys are interested on our travel journey by flight in Qatar Airways from Kuala Lumpur, transit via Doha and then to Cairo, you guys can check out the video up here. I've published it in our first episode of this series. So you guys can check out this video later. So that's a wrap for our Egypt adventure. So I would like to thank all of you who has been watching my Egypt travels from beginning until the end. Let me know in the comment which is your favorite vlog of our Egypt travel. I'd like to know which one resonate the most with you and if you enjoy this video make sure you give me a thumbs up if you're new to this channel we got a whole Egypt travel playlist for you to dive deep and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and help me to reach 1000 subscribers go it truly means the world to me and it will fuel my wanderlust to keep producing even more amazing travel content Remember, even though this adventure ends, there's always another one waiting for you around the corner. So until next time, stay curious, stay adventurous and maasalama.